Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at the second gasket mount keyboard from Red Dragon. About two months back I took a look at the K649 ALF, I think. Um, I, I know I sometimes mess up models but I'll definitely correct it if I did say it wrong. But it was a 75% um, just standard layout without a knob um, gasket mount keyboard I thought it was really well done especially being Red Dragon's first well now they've come out with their second um, I gave them some feedback on the original one and let's hope that they put some feedback in here but this is their first gasket mount 75% with a knob a keyboard from Red Dragon called the u Town. Pro K673. So let's go ahead and open her up and see what we've got in the box. The elf that I reviewed, um, it was a wired only, and I do believe that this is a three mode. Setting the keyboard aside, let's just see what's in the box. We have a we have a uh, operating instruction manual. Uh, it shows the uh, different switches for 2.4 Bluetooth, the USB ports on the side storage slot for the USB um, dongle as well as some light indicators and then it tells you about the uh, the knob fault function is at volume to check check the volume photo for volume oh um, and short press the knob to mute but oh, okay this has a dual functionality if you press and hold it for three seconds then it's going to handle brightness control for your LEDs. I've been seeing a lot of these boards do that um, or pro provide that functionality. We have a wired switch and keycap puller. We have a few extra switches and it looks like I've got red blows up on this one. They are not lubed, but I gotta say, Red Dragon switches once lubed, they actually they sound much better than they have any business in sounding and feel. Again, we have a nice USB A to USB C cable that so many more brands need to be following in the footsteps of Red Dragon when it comes to this, because. Yes, many laptops only have the C connector. So having that tail in case you're going to be switching keyboards, which it's a wireless keyboard, so it's more likely that you're going to be going different places and you need to charge it, and you only have that one USB-C port on your laptop, and this connector is not attached with a tail, it's very easy to use, especially if you're out and about. And you knock it over accidentally you don't know that you did and then you leave without it and then that's it so I really appreciate that Red Dragon always does this and as always we have some Red Dragon stickers um, one of these days I'm probably gonna stick a bomb a Red Dragon sticker with Red Dragon stickers so here we are with the Red Dragon UCAL Pro K673 um, as I believe the um, the elf the first gasket mounted one also had this same I guess translucent top cover it's not really see-through but it's it's very glossy and it had this um, protective plastic film on it as well so let's go ahead and peel it off I've always enjoyed peeling off this stuff this one is actually pretty well attached though. Well, I just spent about five minutes peeling that off, so it wasn't as fun as I usually remember. Usually it's one nice single slow pull. So we've got 
a very standard 75%. We don't have the F-13, but we do have a four column uh, exploded navigation as well as a exploded out arrow cluster. Um, it does appear that we have shine through keycaps. So most of the time when we're dealing with shine through, we're gonna be dealing with some ABS keycaps. And let's see. What are the thickness of these keycaps? Uh, 0.9. Mm. I gotta say, uh, my cutoff is one. That's like the bare minimum, one millimeter. I prefer at least 1.2, 1.3. But when you're dealing with these shine through keycaps, that's usually what you're gonna get is below one millimeter. So you're gonna have a very, well, it's not super soft but it's going to lend to a more clacky type of sound profile. Now again for the switches, we have the Red Dragon Reds, which are stock. I do have um, some ping. And as far as dampening goes, it looks like we are quite well dampened. We have a nice, uh, feels like a silicone rubber between the PC plate and the PCB. And then, yeah, we have a Dick Thunts foam uh, down below and five pin compatibility with north facing LEDs. Now, the knob is nice and metal. Oh, and it's attached quite well. All right, so we got a standard uh, white um, round potentiator meter knob, it is not a D knob as a lot of the first ones that came out. I'm seeing this and this more often uh, than not. So if you want to get a um, replacement switch for this, you're gonna wanna make sure that it has the round hole. It's not a D-shaped, but that's a nice metal knob. It's very solid and I like the press. It has enough travel and enough of a click that, I mean, even if it was loud, I'd be able to feel it because it does have a nice it's not tactile, but it definitely gives you feedback. Now, as far as the case goes, I got to say, yes, I was into ska in the 90s. And that's not the only reason. I like two-tone. I like the contrast, the black and the white, you know, the evil versus the good. The, the duality of what infuses everything um, in seen in, in physical format. Uh, we didn't get too many two-tone items back in the day. And Unless, you know, your top half of your Commodore 64 spent, you know, some good time with the light and became a little bit more yellowed and the bottom didn't. But I regress. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the keycaps, and I, I got to say, I wish that they would have gone with... I know they have their Bullet series, and they have a couple of other um, better switches that even... I think they all might come loot, but even the ones that don't, if there is some that don't, they're not pingy. They sound good as is. And I know those are probably a few cents more per switch than these, but I think that would have gone a long way. But as far as the sign through keycaps, I know that their core audience is gamers still, so, and most gamers appreciate the, uh, the shine through uh, and the north facing. So, on the side, we have our USB-C connector as well as the mode switch for Bluetooth and 2.4. On the bottom, we have our pad for our feet as well as two flip-out feet and the Red Dragon label. Not really much else here. It does look like... Hey, look, I forgot a piece of plastic. Look, it does look like we would need to use a screwdriver to get in there. And on the other side, we have the pocket for... The USB dongle. I kind of like it on the side. Uh, and it does say Red Dragon. Um, looks like embossed in there. I don't know, it looks like it might just be a, a white sticker on a white background. So at least I'm going to know, you know, if I come across it, that I can narrow down the possibilities of which keyboard it goes to. <clears throat> it feels uh, very solid. Um, it does not feel 
light. There has been a few Red Dragon boards that, you know, may sound and feel okay, but they, they just felt a little light. Now, another thing that I found with Red Dragon boards, they're bad. I don't know what witchcraft or, or voodoo they do for their batteries because a lot of their batteries are rated at a third or a half of comparable wireless keyboards you know same form factor same features uh, or for the most part you know same rgb whatever but whereas some of those will need to be charged more often i've seen red dragon keyboards on a 1500 milliamp hour battery with the rgbs on work for weeks in a working environment this there's first 75 percent I, I gotta say i do like the knob i'm still kind of on the fence they did use the same kind of extra fingerprinty type um cover i mean the bottom is glossy as well but the gloss on this black is just I, I like the design. I do like the bezels and that wraparound um, bevel, I guess. It it looks nice, but that shine, because of it being such a magnet uh, for fingerprints and any grease, it's just, mm, I don't know. Let's go ahead and see what these lights look like. All right, so we got blinking. I'm gonna try it to pair. It's got it in 2.4 right now, so it turns the lights on and off. All right, there's the light effects, it's insert. So despite it seeming to have a good amount of padding in here, I don't know if it's the switches that they're not lubed, but I almost feel like the uh, the first 75% cast amount I took a look at was sounding a lot better than this one. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Red Dragon UCAL K673 Pro. An 81 key with a knob, 75% gasket mount, 3 mode keyboard with a PC plate. This does come with Red Dragon Red unlubed switches and has Pro Software for remapping keys and function layers. The knob does have dual functionality as both volume and mute, as well as light, LED brightness, and turning on and off. This keyboard weighs 907 grams as loaded with a 3000 milliamp hour battery. The PCB on this keyboard is north facing and is 3 and 5 pin hot swap compatible. The chin of this keyboard sits at 19 millimeters while the back sits at 25 millimeters providing for a default typing angle of 5 degrees. Using the first pair of fold out feet will raise the back to 32 millimeters changing the angle of typing to 8 degrees. Raising the final set of fold out feet will take the back up to 41 millimeters changing the angle of typing to 11 degrees. This keyboard currently manufacture retail price of $64.99, though is available for $55 on reddragon.shop and $59 on Amazon. So I gotta say, this is an interesting keyboard though. Red Dragon has acquired some other switches and branded them as their own. Um, a few of them are called the bullet line and they have some others they're basically otemu switches but there are better switches they have available for this and for the little bit it would have cost i don't understand why they wouldn't load up pre-lube switches on here because i think it's almost i don't think it's all the, the switches fault but the switch is definitely take away from what I think would be a much better experience. So I'm going to go ahead and do a stock sound test and leave it right here. But then I'm going to come back and I'm kind of curious how it's built inside. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up and I'm, I'm going to try a couple of mods and I'm going to, I do believe I have a set of Red Dragon Reds that are already lubed. That way I don't have to lube the ones here. And 
let's see what kind of difference I can make because I have modded quite a few Red Dragon boards in the past and usually I can take it from sounding like something like this or worse to sounding much better. So I want to see how much of a difference that can make because I mean, this is a decently priced 75% three mode. Um, you know, being that it comes with switches and keycaps, but if you want to keep them, is it worth, you know, putting the time to lube them or, you know, open it up and mod it? So let's find out. So I'm going to go ahead and do a stock sound test and we'll come right back and we'll see about opening this up and what's inside of there. I'm going to go ahead and replace the stock reds in here that are very, um, very pingy. And these are white bottom reds, but I don't think these should make much of a difference. They're both uh, three pin. They look to be like from a very similar mold. One, the white ones say 18, the black ones say... 33, but they are definitely the same manufacturer. I'm going to go ahead and replace these out and then do a sound test to see where we're at. Alright, so I think the lube switch has made a difference not a significant difference i think at this point it really points to the keycaps being the culprit of that more tinny plasticky cheap sound let's go ahead and do a sound test and see what you guys think all right well i think that made a difference i don't know if the difference was significant enough next up let's go ahead and open this up and see what this keyboard is made of all right so it looks like we've got eight screws here at the bottom all right now let's see about pulling this top off So it's both screwed in and clipped in. I don't know if it's just security or they just don't want us to get in here. <laughs> let's hope we don't find another screw along the way. And this is enough. But let's see. Yes, those are cat hairs I keep swiping and blowing away. I think we got it. There we go. All right, let's not pull too hard. We've got a ribbon cable here. Let's go ahead and unlock it. All right. I see that they're using ribbon cables more often. I'm kind of liking that change. We're going to have to make sure about the switch that we have it well and lined up with this so that we don't cause any issues when we close it back up. But So we do have a nice piece of silicone dampening here below the case and we see that the battery is directly attached to the PCB. It really feels like there's something holding it in place. I didn't see any screws when I was replacing the switches, so there shouldn't be anything screwed into place, but the plate just does not want to detach here near the back. So it seems to me that there's these three... Oh, 
Yep, that's it. These three clips right there, that was it. So, those clips were the ones holding this on top. All right, now we can actually get to this. So we've got some gasket socks. Oh, these gaskets <laughs> feel like they're plastic. They don't feel like rubber. There's no give to them. They're literally just hard plastic. So that's not necessarily a gasket there. Um, I mean, just because it has a spot to sit in. That's why I was wondering, because it doesn't have much flex, because it's really just the plastic flexing, not it giving like it should be. That's kind of, um, to be honest, it's kind of disappointing. All right, I am going to continue. Since since we're here, may as well just go the whole nine yards. A lot of flux left over from that knob connection. I don't, I don't like to see flux. That should be cleaned off prior to leaving the factory, to be quite honest. All right, I got those screws out, but we still... I guess it's the switches holding them in place, so... Let's go ahead and... Take out these switches I just installed. <laughs> All right, so now we've got... Well, almost taken apart. Looks like we have either screws. There might be a couple of screws underneath here. There is a screw. All right. Well, I took a chance. And I was right. I didn't want to break it, but I kind of felt like there was something more holding this in place. And I was right. I personally am not a fan when they make it hard to get into their keyboard. Mechanical keyboards are almost, by the very definition, meant to be modded. And when it's made difficult like this, it's like, what are you hiding? Why don't you want me in here? All right, so we can stick, well, I, know, I guess we can't stick this back on because we're going to need to screw this back into place. So let's get this. Thankfully, it's just a light piece of double tape, but obviously you want to do this with plastic. You do not want to puncture this battery. It also looks like they've at least tried to glue the JST connector here. Come on, Red Dragon, what are you doing? You make a better keyboards, you should make them easier to mod as well. This, um, these uh, anti mod measures are not appreciated at all. I mean, come on, glue on a JST connector? That's just, uh, yeah, that's disappointing. All right, now we can take this apart. And we see, all right, there's the light diffuser. Of course it's in three pieces. Why wouldn't it be? This goes like this. Oh, that actually has a soft gasket on there. But this goes here. Let's leave it there for right now. We have what feels like it's very light EVA. I think. Uh, and actually, with the plate off, I can feel a couple of these stabilizers are actually pretty loose. So, since I'm in here and it took so long to get in here, I am going to go ahead and do some modding. I'm going to mod this thing and I'm going to apply some of the known mods as well as one of the newer mods that I'm doing. But first things first, I'm going to apply some Tempest tape. Though I'm not going to go too awfully crazy because I have so many spots that I have to open up for connectors. So I may just go with one layer. Because I'm going to have to make a lot of holes. 
So we've just got one layer on there, but this isn't the end. This is only the beginning. Let's, let me go get my next implement. All right. All right, so first off, I've got a sheet of PE foam cut from a very red dragon bag. It wasn't for this one, but for another keyboard. And I'm gonna cut this to size, basically making sure. Now, one thing I, I like to make sure, now this one is pretty thick, but I can still see my hand. Uh, this is about the thickest I will use. I prefer the thinner, but I can't. I know if I went digging, I could probably find it, but this, as long as I can see my hand through it, then I know that it's gonna be thin enough, and it is pretty. It's just rigid, uh, it's got ridges on it, but it's still thin, and the pins will go right through. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just mark it. Let's go ahead and take this puppy out. And put this in place. All right, looks like we're good, maybe a little doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to make sure that it's going to stay flat on there. All right, I think that's good. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we can use pet plastic, which I have some sheets of. But I have been testing, and I have found that the Ziploc hefty bags do just as good of a job. And you don't have to pre-cut the holes which means you don't have to worry about punching out the holes for the uh, center studs and the extra pins on a five pin. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead. I should probably take this out as we're gonna need to put this back down in a minute. And I can just use this as a stencil. Plastic will go below the PE. It looks like it's good. We do want to go ahead and just do starter holes for this clip so that we can make sure we can get it in there. Then place this on here. All right, that's not really meant to hold the whole thing into place but we just want to make sure it's on there now go ahead and put on this layer making sure to keep this as straight as possible all right and because these have a little bit of looseness, I'm just going to do the tape mod to them real quick. Much easier to do this when the plate is disassembled. We can go ahead and pop these into their slots. And I'm going to make sure they're caught there. Down and lock. See, no more wiggling. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do these to the rest of these. All right, now we have some stable stabilizers. Nice. All right, so let's get back to this. And let's go ahead and put the neoprene. PCP plate layer. And then this. All right, so here, this should be fun. Let's see if I can reattach this the right way and getting see where these holes are at. They don't show through this way, so. <laughs> All right. Well, that was easier than I expected it to be, so let's go ahead and put this 
screw back in. And I do believe we've got it lined up. Let's make sure by putting this screw back in because this should hold the whole assembly together. Yep, all right. So we've got the first one of those in. May as well go ahead and do the rest of these. All right, so now we have the PC plate assembly. As you can see, we have the plastic above, the PCB, and the PE foam above the plastic. All right, let's go ahead and reattach this battery. All right, and then we can just use the double-sided tape that's already there. Put that back in place. Sweet. Now, while we have it open, let's go ahead and punch these through. Always good to support from the back. So we're going to stick for the Red Dragon switches for right now. The lube Red Dragon switches, not the stock. Let me go ahead and do the corners first. All right, so now we have the plate PCB assembly with PE foam and the PET plastic mod. Obviously, we're doing the Ziploc plastic. It's a very similar plastic. It's not PET, but it in my testing so far and yes I am working on a video but I have to jump back and forth between them but I will have a video that showcases several keyboards with before and after doing both the uh, PET plastic the 4 mil, as well as doing the Ziploc plastic all right so now comes the fun part there we go now uh, All right, now we have it locked into place. Now let's move the switch all the way down, all the way down. Oh. Yeah, well that was fun. All right, we're in. All right, just so you guys can see, there really isn't that much flux because these things don't really give so not sure yeah not sure why they didn't just use some silicone rubber there but i don't know i've got it in now that's what matters and just to make sure everything is connected and that ribbon cable is right that looks like it Close this up then. All right. All right. I don't know why it feels denser. It's not like we added that much weight, but you just popped out for no reason. All right. I'm going to go ahead and load up the stock key caps and do a sound test. Then I'm going to go ahead and switch out the switches and the key caps so that we can see what kind of difference we get when we're using some actual, you know, PBT or ABS double shot keys or Dysa, but something a little bit thicker than the stock ones so that we can actually get a difference in sounds from complete stock to a I mean I wouldn't say this is fully modded but it's definitely modded a lot more than a 
and then we can tell the difference between the modded and the non-modded. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do another sound test. Um, we have looped Red Dragon Reds. Um, they're not the exact same, but they're close enough to what came on here, but we replaced them with lube switches. Um, we've done one layer of Tempest tape to the back of the PCB very carefully because there's a lot of little things to deal with there, um, but I think that's enough. We have put a layer of PE foam as well as a layer of pet plastic. We're using Ziploc bag here, but the, the pet plastic is above the PCB with the PE foam being above that. So let me go ahead and do a sound test and we'll come back and then I'm going to replace the switches and the keycaps for one final sound test. All right. So for this final build, I've gone ahead and picked out some switches and some keycap. So yeah, today we're going to be using uh, these switches that were sent out to me courtesy of Meow Key. Um, they're a newer site, but I've heard nothing but good things from them. And they had participate in some of the Budget Keeves giveaways, which I do appreciate their support for the community. We have a gold-plated dual-stage spring that bottoms out at 63 grams, but has an actuation force of 42 grams. It has a pre-travel of 2 millimeters with a total travel of 3.5. It is made out of a palm stem, a PC top, and a nylon bottom. So I will be loading up these linears that inspects they're similar to the RK switches, but obviously these are much better quality and we do have a long pull stem. Um, for switches, I've gone ahead and picked out white on black, the Eiffel clones. So these have that semi-transparent uh, top layer with the double shot white coming through. And I do believe these are PBT, but I will correct if I'm mistaken. So let me go ahead. I'm going to take these off and stick them somewhere. And then we will go ahead and um, load up the new switches and do a sound test and see where we started to where we got. So here we are with the modded K673 Pro uh, from Red Dragon. Um, I gotta say, now that I've modded it, I have a lot more appreciation for this board. I think Red Dragon would be doing themselves a huge favor if they were add if they were to add to this an IXPE sheet, a PET sheet, and some switches that are pre-lubed or at least have little or minimal ping as well as some thicker preferably pbt but even abs keycaps those few things i would gladly pay more than they're asking for right now right now this to me feels closer to a 90 dollar or more um mechanical keyboard granted i am using some some different switches but they have pretty good switches as well, and I'm using these Eiffel, um, I can't remember exactly the name, the, the, the white on black. Um, I have the red, the blue, the purple, and this black. I still need to get the green, but I, I really feel that now, I mean, the, for me, the Eiffel kind of fits nicely. I mean, I know they're not as shiny as this, but 
we went ahead and took off the logo from the side. Um, we added one layer of Tempest tape, PE foam, as well as instead of an actual 4 mil PET sheet, I used a cut up Ziploc um, gallon bag. Actually, no, I think it was a quart bag. Or it might have been a gallon. I don't know. I cut it open. Obviously, you don't want to use both layers. It'd be too thick. But um, these are five pin switches and they went in no problem. If you're doing it with PET and it's four mil, you're going to have to cut out or punch through the holes either with a needle, a push pin, or something that's got a nice sharp tip on it just so that uh, those plastic pins, I mean, you could push, but I think it's safer to just go ahead and you know, make the holes of those slide right in there. With the Ziploc bag, it's unneeded. So we did uh, a couple of sound tests. We did the stock sound test. We did a lube switch sound test. Um, we did the lube switches and the stock keycap sound test after we modded it. And then we've done a sound test now with a complete mod, change of switches, change of keycaps. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave uh, the little clips in throughout the video but at the end i'm going to leave full sound test with uh, chapters so you guys can just jump right to it and at the end i will leave a super cut between the first and the final i would love to hear your guys opinion about this keyboard what do you think um did you prefer it stock did you prefer it in the middle do you like it like this i mean it is definitely louder uh, obviously the the pe foam and the plastic i think but I think that the way that it is right now, I think it's definitely more of a clacky build, but it increased the volume. It sounds, it sounds more solid. I personally prefer this than what it sounded like stock. I was kind of expected to sound a little bit better, but I'm going to take some notes down and I'm going to send them over to Red Dragon, see if they're interested in my feedback. But I would love to hear your guys' feedback before I send them in, you know, what I think that could help them. Yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't cost that much more. And I think they would have a lot more happy customers. I mean, whether gaming or enthusiasts, I think they're going to just fit that niche just fine because they're going to provide a baseboard that has a very good sound on its own so it's just really going to help amplify whatever switches and keycaps you put in there again your thoughts any ideas if i should come back to it would you like to hear different switches in it because i'd like to i'm kind of curious what maybe a tactile heavy tactile like a u4t with some sa or mt3 keycaps might sound like but i like how this sounds um I'm much more impressed now that I've done the mod. It didn't take very long. Um, I've actually been running errands and coming back and forth and, and doing it. So um, I can't say exactly how it took me, but roughly probably about two hours because of the back and forth on the switches. Um, if I hadn't done that and just, gone, just went straight to the mod, I think it would have taken me about an hour roughly, if not you know, a little bit less. So uh, very easy to mod. It's a little bit of a tricky part to take apart and to put back together. But as you could see, it really wasn't impossible. It was just, just more about being careful and being patient, which I know a lot of times I, I don't have the greatest levels of patience as I should, though I'm getting better as I get older. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I do hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. Let's start a conversation in the comments below. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.